Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so we'll post lunch start with our first session. Uh, I would like to invite two of my colleagues, uh, Surendra Singh Sucharya, uh, who's product manager at Xstep Foundation. Uh, he's passionate about improving learning in school education and, and truly believes in walking the talk. Uh, he spent two years in Mumbai as a TFI fellow getting the first time you know, experience what the education is about uh, as a teacher before he uh, joined Next Step Foundation. And uh, second, I would also uh, like to invite uh, Railu Villa. He's managing director, Sanketa and chief architect. Uh, he has worked extensively building various learning solutions uh, even prior to Next Step, uh, you know, working on Sunbird with Next Step Foundation. He's principal architect and a member of design council for Sunbird, a calm and a deep thinker. Uh, welcome, Surain and Railwin, over to you. Thank you, Alok. Thanks, Alok. Hi, everyone. Okay. So, Surain, would you like to start first? Yeah. Uh, so, we'll start with the uh, functional overview of the question bank and then deep dive into the architecture with Railu walking us through that. Uh, so, welcome, everyone. Uh, hope you had a good break. Uh, you know, as I think someone said earlier, someone said earlier that question asking a question is a natural way to learn uh, you know we we notice kids asking some very powerful but innocent questions around us uh, and that's how they learn that's how learning begins with them before they join school uh, or or any formal sort of education uh, and especially in today's scenario when uh, you know continuity of learning is at question a powerful infrastructure like Sunbird can empower you to amplify the efforts of those at the front line. So uh, welcome again. Let's start with this question bank deep dive. As you know that at Sunbird, we have enabled the key interactions for any learning environment. Uh, you know, that focuses on three personas, learner, instructor, administrators, uh, three key scenarios of either they are learning, helping someone learn or managing learning, which is essentially the learning and administration interaction. So we've really unpacked learning for, for any environment uh, and we've resolved for the complexity and diversity across environments to arrive at these persona driven use cases. So using this, it enables you to implement these in any of your context, whether you are in professional learning, in K-12 education, whether you're doing financial inclusion, teaching farmers how to grow good crops, or you're teaching photography or cooking, anything that you might be interested in. And at the heart of these two interactions, we have this virtuous loop of learn, interact, do, sense that involves all three key actors uh, in this cycle. <clears throat> and if you observe closely, questions play an important role in enabling uh, interactions between learner and instructor. It gives an opportunity for them to exchange information with each other. Uh, you know, curious questions from learners can at times even toss the teacher. <laughs> and I've faced it firsthand a few times. Uh, and questions also enable us to sense, to sense what's going on. You can conduct surveys to know what's going on on ground. So questions do power this loop in a great way. Let's look at all the examples of what all questions can enable us to do. Uh, you know, it can power a learner to practice and, and that gives them the power to know what, where they are, or it can enable a facilitator to revise uh, as in to enable revision uh, to conduct assessments, to, uh, for admins to conduct feedback polls, to do surveys or to remediate. And most important of all, to even raise curiosity in learners to keep them engaged in lifelong learning. Um, this reminds me of an example uh, at Teach for India. Uh, when I was teaching uh, about five, six years ago in Mumbai in a low income community, there was a child, Noor, uh, and she asked a very interesting question. She asked, what if we put all the garbage in her community into the black hole? 
would it vanish? And this was at the end of a science for science class. Uh, she was in class six. And I was surprised at, at what an innovative solution she had for the garbage problem. So essentially question enables you to do variety of use cases in all different contexts. Uh, and what is listed here is just uh, a few examples. Uh, you know, truly a question is a question is a question, and it can power you to do anything you wish to do. The right question at the right time is very powerful. Now, let's take a few examples in detail to, to see the diversity in play. Uh, consider that an HR wants to conduct an assessment for incoming batch of teammates. The assessment has three sections of 10 questions each and only three attempts are allowed. It must be completed within an hour. And merit certificates for best of three attempts is to be given. Uh, you know, imagine this scenario, how it would play out, uh, the kind of devices it would get involved in, the structure of the paper that would be in this use case. And now contrast it with uh, government wants to conduct a survey. The healthcare volunteer needs to go in the communities in the month of April to June and collect the mandatory information. And now imagine the diversity of devices that would come into play here if the survey is conducted nationwide, right? And now uh, take an orthogonal use case where a child wants to practice for a topic in their syllabus and the app, the app provides them a few questions at random from a pool, uh, maybe through the chatbot and the student gets feedback as she responds. They can check hints or solution if they have a doubt. Just take a second to, to grapple with the diversity of these use cases and, and let's try to unpack them to peel the layers of what's under them, right? And then the question that would come to your mind is, what if I had a Swiss knife? Because maybe that's how you need a multi-purpose tool that can tackle the variety of needs uh, by really unpacking them. So if you, for example, take um, shuffling, right? Practice required questions to be shuffled, but survey and assessment did not require them to be shuffled. Uh, let's say you take gamification. Survey didn't require gamification, but practice maybe required gamification so that the child is motivated. If you look at something like scoring, um, you know, a survey does not have a score. It's just a means to collect information. There is no right or wrong in a survey, uh, but practice and assessment questions do have scoring. Maybe the assessment had even a complex scoring logic like best of three attempts. And you know, whether you want to give a certificate, whether you want to track progress, uh, limit attempts, have a start and end date. So what we have done at Sunbird is we have put our best foot forward and tried to think exhaustively and comprehensively about the various capabilities that can go behind any question or question set. And we've unpacked these, we've generalized them to create a question bank digital infrastructure, right? So what this infrastructure is, is we have generalized all the diverse use cases. We have resolved for diversity. We have externalized all that can be configured so that the same infrastructure can be leveraged in a variety of use cases. And we've approached it through a minimal design, just how you can use a Lego block to make anything. Uh, you know, a very simple design like that, a, a very small minimal block that can power so many things. Let's look at what is this. So this is an overview of the question bank digital infrastructure. Uh, at the epicenter, we have the interoperable specification. Uh, what that means is it allows you to create and reuse questions in variety of use cases, as you saw earlier. It allows you to reuse questions across organizations, across instances of Sunbird, uh, and it, it will power a long living question bank, a question bank which can be sustained for decades to come. And this question bank contains questions and question sets, which are tagged to meaningful metadata, meaningful data about the context of these questions and question sets. And when somebody plays them, it generates insightful data, you know, using telemetry. Uh, so, so you know what the learners are doing, 
how they are thinking uh, or what's really going on. It allows you to sense through that. And this, uh, all of this is exposed via the APIs, which are available through the editor and the player, our, our key products uh, that allow you to create or play these questions and question sets. With this at the center, you can almost imagine any possible use case. Uh, you know, you can create question categories of various types. You can create question set categories as per the need. And both of these can be combined to power use cases like courses, textbooks, trainings, projects, assignments, you name it and it might be possible here. Uh, and all of this is available through our key uh, apps that we have, the sourcing portal, the consumption portal, both of them you heard earlier today, the mobile app and the desktop app. Now, let's take a pause and go deeper into what is a question set. It's a hierarchical set of questions and question sets. Well, that sounds like inception, but yeah, a question set contains a question set or it can contain a question set. The, the first line, hierarchical set, means that you can compose any structure out of this that you wish. For example, if you wanted a very structured exam paper, like an exam paper that has three sections, each section has questions, you can make it. But if you just wanted a simple worksheet where it's just a bunch of few questions, you could make it. Or if you wanted a complex scenario where you wanted to throw questions at random, that's possible. So it's a hierarchical set of questions and question sets. You can track progress. You can issue rule-based certificates. Um, and you know a question set contains instructions, few details about what it is, and settings to control its behavior. And through this, it's possible to have even advanced use cases like rubric-based evaluation, branching rules, adaptive tests, and many more. Uh, question sets can be of various categories, as you saw earlier. So this is the generalized minimal extensible design that we've implemented. Let's go one step deeper and look at what is a question. A question has interactions such as making choices or matching pairs or ordering things in a sequence or inputting some text or uploading a file, could be anything. A question emits data such as score, time spent, attempts, interactions, and a question contains hints, solutions, and settings to control its behavior. And a question can have translations. It can have dynamic behavior so that it's, it's not a static question. It's really an interactive question as you play with it. Now, <clears throat> let's take an example to understand the anatomy of a question. At the center, we have a question, which is a dash is made up of protons and electrons. What it has, it has data such as atom is the accepted response. There is no image to be referred to. It controls behavior like feedback to be given, hints not to be given. It contains really meaningful data like what curriculum is it from? What topic does it teach? What level of learning is it at? And this question can be used in a variety of contexts like revision, practice, test, and, and many other contexts. So, so this is a really powerful minimal Lego block construct that we have, uh, you know, that powers the variety of use cases across context. Now let's zoom out a bit and see how is all of this coming together to power these variety of use cases. We have microservices at the base through which questions and question sets are exposed. You have other microservices like usage and progress, telemetry and others. Through these, you can configure categories, question categories of your choice. Then you can configure the behavior for these categories in your own way. All of this comes together to create these configurable question categories like practice, quiz, survey. And when you put them in a collection like course or project or a book or a training, it powers a whole learning journey for someone. And, and through this learning journey, you can you know, enable sensing as to through an assessment, you can conduct quizzes to engage them and so on. And all of this is available through the player and the editor, which is embedded in the mobile desktop and web portal. Let's take a closer look 
at the player. The player is kept uh, is designed keeping in mind the engagement for learners. So it's possible to have gamification. It supports variety of uh, resolutions, so you can you can really play it on a phone or a desktop or a tablet or any device, or you could even print it. By the way, uh, you know if there are like there are cases where teachers want to print worksheets and take them to class, that's also possible. Um, in the player, you can view progress, jump to any question, get hints, solution. You can keep track of time, uh, and you can get certificates if that's enabled by the creator. Uh, so that's uh, how all this powerful infrastructure is coming to the front for a user. And for creators, we have made it really easy by, by providing a clean, neat interface that allows you to create or reuse questions, uh, configure settings, preview how the question would look when it goes to the player. Um, and then, you know, in the creation workflow, as you learned earlier, there is a step to review. So you can review and add comments. Uh, make sure the questions are really curated. The question bank has powerful curated questions appropriate for the context. And <clears throat> on top of this editor, you can add plugins to provide innovative ways to create. I'm going to show you an example in the next slide uh, as to how one of our adopters in the school education space, they, they enabled some very creative games like crossword, memory game, and, and other fun learning activities for numeracy and literacy, uh, where creators don't have to create questions one by one. They can just click a few buttons, select a few settings, and you know, out of that, they have uh, a bunch of questions which they can just share with their learners. Uh, so this was a very powerful, innovative implementation we saw. There was one more that I'm reminded where, uh, you know, using a question, someone created a whole robo game where as you answer the questions on the phone, the robo moves forward, goes backward and, and stuff like that. So there are some really powerful use cases, innovative use cases possible with questions. Uh, and the magic is all of this is accessible anytime, anywhere. Through embedding all our architecture principles into this, it's really uh, made you know, context free. You, you can use it wherever you want, however you want. Um, so now I would pause a bit, uh, invite if there are any questions, and then invite Rilo to walk us through the architecture behind all of this. Yeah, so Suren, uh, uh, I'll, I'll share two questions for you before we move forward uh, on the technical aspect uh, with Rilo. Uh, you mentioned about healthcare, you know, volunteer. You mentioned about a healthcare, you know, volunteer going across community, and you know, if we take example of. COVID, uh, you know, uh, in this context, um, where uh, the focus of that healthcare, you know, volunteer might be that, okay, let me figure out, you know, what is happening in a particular community, what is the level of, let's say, a particular type infection. Mm -hmm. Can you articulate how that, you know, a question being used digitally to get information for a for an individual, how that mm -hmm overlays and, and add value from a data perspective, taking a question data of an individual to the next level of, let's say, a, a, a ward, a district, a state, a nation? Right, right. So, uh, you know, one of the key aspect of the question set was to enable tracking. Uh, and through track, tracking, it would, you know, require you to provide uh, like some key information like your login ID, uh, and, and if uh, one configures it in a way that before you start using the question set, you also have to provide uh, the district, the ward, the block where you are taking that survey. Uh, and, and all of this can be non-PII data, it does not really have to you know, ask people's name and all. So you can capture some demographic data and, on, and then follow the survey with it. And, and when you submit the survey, the survey responses contain all of this data which uh, through the data pipeline is, uh, you know, aggregated, uh, accumulated in a way that you can present it at district level, level. You can create drill downs across these levels. Okay. So what I hear from you, uh, you know, Surain, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. What you're saying is when you capture a data point, like a healthcare, you know, uh, individual in this context, 
uh, the need to capture it at a scale of a district or a nation when it is done in a non-digital way, the accumulation of that uh, to analyze it becomes difficult. But in Sunbird, the way you have enabled it is that's seamless. The data flows seamless uh, within the system. And then on top of it, there are capabilities to analyze. And then suddenly uh, the power of one question becomes many folds because of the you know uh, com com commentarial impact and hence suddenly the data point of one person being infected or not at a na nation level at a district level you can actually see prediction you can actually maybe even predict what's coming right right uh, yes. am i understanding right 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 so it's resting on the like the giant infrastructure below it which has all these data pipeline the the accessible consumption interface, the powerful creation cycle, right? Mm -hmm. And, and again, this, this data collected at the scale of nation through a simple question is really powerful. It, it, mm -hmm. Like by doing some, uh, you know, big data analytics on top of it, you could really predict uh, what, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how does it help to, you know, uh, we talked about administration interaction loops, uh, you know, intertwining with the learning, you know, interaction loops. Uh, let's take an example of education space and what you just articulated in the healthcare. If I overplay that, you know, in an education space, uh, you know, in education today, everyone who's engaged in the education, right, is worried about where, where am I, where is my, you know, my, my kid, where is my class, you know, where is my school, where is my district in context of learning outcomes, in context of, you know, uh, are they, Ahead are they lagging? Are they on you know on track as per the uh, as per the uh, goals being set year after year? What is the power you know? Uh, what is the value you can generate uh, by using the question in Sunbird Infra? Can you give one or two examples? Yeah. Actually, I was just, as you were talking, I was just thinking about uh, some past implementations that have happened, right? Especially in the school education space, where by using a uh, a question uh, for practice, for exam preparation, just before an exam, what a state government discovered is that a uh, few students were referring to certain topics most uh, just a day before the exam. And that was quite powerful. What they also discovered is that what are some of the most uh, pressing needs of learners? What are some of the uh, missing gaps in their learning uh, journey? Like what topics are they really lagging behind on? And all of this data at the scale of a state or even a nation is possible through the question bank intra. Another mm -hmm. interesting case is if uh, you, know, you want to gather the, the training needs of teachers, where you want to know what, your te like what the teachers need most in such uncertain times, you could conduct a survey to gather their training needs to know what they're really struggling with mm -hmm. and cater the, the trainings that are done for teachers in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really enabling you to sense what's going on on the ground in the lives of the learners, uh, in the lives of those who are helping them learn. Uh, so it's really a tool to sense what's going on. Mm. So you're also, I mean, uh, if I understood right, you're talking about a manifestation of this intertwining being becoming very powerful where when teacher is teaching a class, a 30 student or 40 student, teacher's ability to monitor and assess and you know evaluate what is the need for each individual student is possible because of the physical uh, you know, uh, uh, approximation and the number which is possible for teacher to manage. But the moment when you take multiple classrooms in a school and multiple schools in a district, state, nation, the ability for the administrator to really know what is the problem, what is the contextual problem in a school, in a district, in a state, right? That ability gets suddenly enabled through a uh, through a infrastructure like uh, you know Sunbird, where you're using digital data capture and, and and aggregating and analyzing, and hence the interventions of the administration becomes much more specific. Is my understanding right? Yeah, perfect. I think what you said is perfect. Okay. Uh, can you also uh, talk about curation capabilities? You know, you talked about uh, you know question and question set, uh, and then when questions are you know created. What kind of curation capabilities are there in Sunbird Infra? How it get uh, leverage? Uh, let, let me just throw one or two questions together and you can probably combine it, right? Uh, and, and, and especially in the context, right? Uh, the question might be for practice, as you said, there are 
question you're saying as test, right? Uh, which also means, do we, does the Sunbird Infra allows me to choose what might be visible to everyone and what might not be visible to everyone? Um, uh, from that perspective, and uh, you know, if you can elaborate. Yeah, so I think you touched upon, so as in, I will answer in two parts. There are two uh, components that power this. One is the curation review workflows where, um, you know, through a very simple life cycle of draft review life, uh, it's possible to create even multi-layered reviews where you can have reviews by two uh, different uh, parties. Like one could be a, a technical review, the other one could be pedagogical review. Uh, in fact, it's also possible to uh, put an M, like an embed an AI engine behind it that could auto review and suggest to the reviewers what might be the possible mistakes in a question or what might be the possible points to look out for. So in terms of curation and review capabilities, uh, while we have a minimal design of draft review and life as a life cycle of a question, uh, in, in the workflow, it's really possible to play, play around and make, make it your own uh, and make it really powerful for the reviewers. On the other hand, um, sorry, what else did you touch upon? You, uh, you know, if, can I make question which is you know not right. visible so, to everyone right. versus because right. you know, if I'm creating a test, practice yeah. use case, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have an attribute called visibility. Uh, you know, when I was presenting the Swiss knife slide, you might have noticed it uh, there. Uh, so visibility uh, allows you to control whether a question is only available within that question paper which means only editors of that question paper can see or edit that question, others cannot. Or to control whether a question is available uh, within the organization to the creators of the organization. So different uh, teams can collaborate and create uh, different types of quizzes or surveys. Or to make a question really public so that it's reusable not within that organization but by anybody else who is using Sunbird and is implementing the, uh, the specs Right. So then anyone can leverage those questions. So mm -hmm. we have about four layers of visibility. Uh, okay. Okay. I'll ask one last question. There's another question quite interesting. Uh, so let me, let me structure it. So, you know, Kamesh talked about, you know, and in fact, Namrata also talked about this whole learning, you know, learning interaction. Uh, Kamesh talked about all various types of assets, question, content, you know, action, action, you know, set. When we look at the question and question set, uh, what are the possibilities to interplay the content and question? Uh, you know, right. you, you articulated the, the set of questions coming, but can you enable a lot more engaging, a lot more interconnected, uh, uh, you know, uh, experience? And if you can share some example. Right, right. In fact, you'll notice on, on our last slide where we're inviting people to contribute. One of the, the interesting use cases is to interplay videos with questions. Uh, so, you know, video lectures, uh, if they are more than three to five minutes, uh, tend to get, uh, tend to lose people's attention. Uh, mm. You know, learners don't really engage with them after three to five minutes. So, if you want to make such long videos engaging, or if you want to put like a curiosity question at the beginning of a video, where you might want to ask that, hey, why do trees grow but stones do not? and then start your video so that the learner is really hooked on to that video. Uh, so it, it's possible to interplay questions with video, insert them at different points to make mm -hmm. the video engaging. It's mm -hmm. even possible to uh, like, you know, put questions in a uh, like fun activity ways, like I, I demonstrated earlier, like crossword games, you can create branching path, like an adaptive test with it. Uh, and, and in fact, one of the uh, example that comes to my mind is you could even design adaptive games. Uh, like, you know, we, we had an example of uh, a game that teach you, teaches you numbers and place value. And at the back of it is powered with a bunch of questions. Uh, mm. but, as, but the interface could be really gamified, engaging, uh, while at the back, it, it's just a simple question. So. Mm -hmm. And the sourcing solution, which Kamesh talked about, is, can that be leveraged to source question and question sets as well? Right, exactly. The, the editor that I was showing is embeddable, is currently embedded in the sourcing solution, mm -hmm. uh, right? Mm -hmm. So it's possible to leverage it uh, for sourcing questions, like for creating, reviewing, curating them. 
uh, and the editor is also a plug and play uh, module so you could even embed it in any of your portals uh, as in any of the uh, adopters portal sure thanks thanks soren so ralu over to you thank you soren and thank you alok uh, just let me share my screen Hi everyone. I hope you guys are enjoying discovering the capabilities of Sunred platform from the morning. So, okay, we have seen the various capabilities of the Question Bank Infra in the previous session by Suren. Let's now see how they are built. I will walk you through the key architectural constructs of this Question Bank Digital Infra. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first. what is a digital infrastructure digital infrastructure or digital infra in short is is basically a set of foundational services and tools that can be leveraged to build many technological capabilities and solutions uh, a popular example of such infrastructure is the gps right it provided a set of foundational capabilities and many solutions like maps logistic services transportation services and even food delivery solutions are built developed using the gps infra so basically what these digital infras offer is the ability to tailor a solution to your needs without the huge uh, overlays or outlays that are traditionally associated with building custom or point solutions okay okay and digital learning assets are the heart of a digital infrastructure in the earlier sessions by kamesh and suren you have seen uh, you have been introduced to all the sunbird digital learning assets in this session we will do a deep dive into the question bank digital infra and its assets the question and the question set okay going back to the same question bank digital infrastructure overview which was presented by uh, suren first thing why do we call question bank as a digital infra it's because in addition to just a set of microservices it also includes standards specifications utilities tools and a set of reference solutions also it is more than just a single platform or a single solution hence we would like to we call it a digital infrastructure this infra can be used to build solutions for a variety of use cases like surveys practice tests quizzes and also for enriching other use cases like courses and textbooks by embedding assessments or tests in them right what we are seeing here are the key components of the infrastructure uh, like the specification on which the whole infra is built on the core objects of it the question and question sets and the apis which are provided to do the management creation publishing of these objects and the ability to create and configure not create actually configure the question and question set categories as per the solution and all the apps workflows tools and components in the infrastructure generate telemetry you which is used to derive insights and enrich the question bank again using those insights right okay now let's get into the details of some of these things now let's start with the qml specification question markup language which is qml in short is a specification for storage rendering and distribution of questions and question sets but why do we need a specification the first reason is for interoperability the qml specification defines a standard format for the uh, representation of questions question sets and the results data this enables the exchange of questions question sets and the data between ordering tools question banks and multiple learning systems this means questions and question sets uh, in one bank in one question bank can be used for usage within the same system and also by other systems 
Another aspect is the need for longevity. Question creation is a very costly activity. It is very important that a question that is created, a good question that is created, remains usable for a long time. Uh, it is very common that uh, either for correcting errors or extending the format, new revisions of spec will become necessary from time to time. And uh, QML specification is a version specification, and these versions will ensure the interchange and usage of questions of older versions also, thereby enabling a longer lifetime for questions and question sets. Another thing is in QML, questions and question sets are first class citizens. That is, they are not monolith black boxes without uh, share, providing any information what they are. They are actually very modular. They represent the knowledge of what a question or question set consists of and what is the purpose whom the question or question set is intended for. And due to this modular structure, they can be reused for different purposes and in different forms also. Okay. And uh, QML is primarily based on open standards like HTML and JSON. HTML and JSON being well-defined and globally acknowledged standards uh, makes it simple for QML implementations to interpret questions and question sets in the form intended by the original author. Okay. More details about the specification are available openly and publicly on the Sunbird Specs GitHub. I would request all of you to go and read that for more understanding of the specification. Okay. Moving on. As I mentioned in my previous slide, a question is not a monolith in QML. It has a well-defined modular structure. QML has a model where a question incorporates the information that defines the question, information that is presented to the user, instructions of how to present to the user, and instructions of how to score the question. For example, in QML, every interaction of the user uh, with the question gets captured as interactions data, and scoring of that question is done using the response declaration rules. The response declaration and the response declaration rules and the interactions are well-defined entities in QML. Uh, a question has many such attributes which are well-defined and well-formed. This and this enables the modularity and reusability of questions. Sim same way, Similar to a question, question sets also have a well-defined structure in the QML spec. A question set is a group of questions and question sets with an associated set of rules uh, that determine which questions the user sees in what order or in what way the user interacts with them. It also has rules that describe the valid paths to which the question set uh, can be taken when the responses will be submitted for processing and when, if at all, the feedback is to be given. Okay. So, and some other key attributes of a question set are like this navigation mode uh, to decide if the question can, set can be consumed in a linear way or a non-linear way. Uh, preconditions and branching rules uh, to define multiple paths in a test based on the responses given by the user. Outcome processing, which contains the rules for computing the score, and visibility, which Alok was asked. There was a question in the previous session. How can I mark a question or a question set uh, visible to everybody, or is it private to only a set of users? That is also a first class attribute in the spec, both for questions and question sets. And going a bit deeper into how the questions and question sets are stored in the Sunbird infrastructure. Uh, a directed graph is used as a data structure. The reason for using a directed graph is its ability to represent the relationships between the nodes. And thus graph can be queried and navigated using those relationships. What it means is uh, like what it in, is in the question bank is the questions and question sets are connected by membership relation in the graph. 
of course question and question sets are nodes in the graph and they're connected by the membership position that means we can create any number of question sets by just connecting them to any number of questions and that helps us to create a lot number of questions uh, question sets using the same set of questions in the question bank and another thing of this another capability of the directed graph in sunbird question bank infer is new relations are configurable let's take an example uh, i can define you can define a prerequisite relation between questions and question sets uh, between two questions or between two question sets which can be used to create screeners for a survey okay what is a screener for a survey it is basically a pre questionnaire that is presented to the users before taking a survey to decide to let the user to take a survey or not so in this case the set of questions uh, a set of questions can be marked uh, if they are marked as prerequisite for a set of questions which are used in the survey then these set of questions can be used to create the screener questionnaire so that is how new relations can be established in the graph for new purposes and new requirements and the question bank graph is ontology driven okay what is an ontology well <laughs> it's a topic big enough that it may take the rest of the whole session and even more so let's save it for a future session specific to ontology okay but jokes apart in sunbird uh, the ontology graph comprises of all the digital learning assets multiple taxonomies used to categorize those assets and the relations between them okay what is this hello uh, okay one more thing what ontology graph enables is to define some governing rules like for example what type of relation is allowed between a question and question set in this case membership is a relation allowed that is allowed between question and question sets okay and because of this one ontology graph where all the assets and the taxonomies are together uh, it allows us to connect objects from different taxonomies like for example uh, i can take a question set under interpersonal skills taxonomy and make it as a prerequisite question set for prerequisite for a question set under software engineering taxonomy thereby uh, we can ask people to take this question set before you can attempt uh, Uh, uh you can start learning a new subject that is the power of an ontology graph and again the ontology is configurable in sunbird that is you can define the relations that are allowed between two types of assets via configuration for example you can add a new configuration or a new rule uh, to allow a relation between collections and question sets this can be used in the course assessments use case where i want to embed assessments within courses so the new relation can be configured and start using them each use case again may need a different set of set of attributes for example uh, in the previous example what i referred the course assessment requires an attribute to store the maximum number of allowed attempts you can configure the schema of both question and question set objects as per the needs of the solution on the fly without requiring a code change uh, for course assessments an attribute max attempts is added to the question set schema via the configuration and in some cases additional behavior will be needed for the new attributes that can be implemented as plugin and deployed on top of the question bank tools uh, editors and players both editor and player have a plugin framework which allows such new capabilities to be implemented as plugins and deployed onto the tool for extensibility moving on uh, again in the course assessment use case uh, the user should not be shown any hints or feedback and the consumption progress of the score uh, of the user has to be tracked whereas in a practice test use case the hints and feedback should be available for the user but the system need not track the consumption progress and score right these two use cases both the use cases can be configured 
using the generalization and externalization capabilities without requiring a code change again. <laughs> okay. So what is this? How is this done? The behavior of showing hints or hiding hints or the behavior of trackability are implemented as reusable components. And these components can be used to configure the categories for a solution. And for course assessment example, a new question set category called course assessment is configured with the behavior as show hints false, show feedback false, and trackable true. And then the course assessment object is ready with the required behavior. And in the earlier session and in the earlier questions, we have talked about the lifecycle management review and curation workflows. And obviously the infra provides APIs for the lifecycle management of both questions and question sets, as well as it provides tools that provide the interfaces for lifecycle management also. Using these lifecycle management tools and services, questions and question sets can be submitted for review by the creators and reviewers can accept, reject, or request changes in them. And on accepting a question or question set that is uh, submitted for review, the, the object is published and an offline consumable package is generated. This package is used by the apps to enable offline consumption of the uh, question and question sets. Okay. And the info also has a post publish step to generate a printable PDF. This post publishing is actually built as a pipeline in the infer that allows you to add new post published steps for questions and question sets. Okay. Another thing is versioning of objects is also supported by the infrastructure. That is, it allows modifications to the object, uh, to the question and question set objects after the publishing. Uh, the subsequent edits to this object result in creation of a new version of the object. And the last published version is still available for consumption until the new version is published again. All these capabilities are inbuilt in the infrastructure and can be used for respective workflows. Okay. As we all know, large problems require more than one solution to solve them. Thus, the need for unbundled microservices that can be combined and used to devise a number of solutions using the same set of services again. Okay. All the capabilities we have discussed so far are exposed as APIs. Let's quickly look at how these different APIs are used for the course assessment solution. Uh, the taxonomy APIs are used to create the course taxonomy. Metadata definition APIs to configure the question set schema to add the max attempts attribute. Category definition APIs to create the new category, to configure the new category course assessment. Question and question set APIs to create and manage the question and question sets to be used in the course assessment. Uh, collection APIs to add and remove question sets to the collection, that is the course in this case. And finally, the usage and progress APIs to track the progress and score of the question sets within this collection. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Another important aspect, if not the most important of all, is the data. We all know data is a cycle. More data creates better assets. Better assets, in turn, again, attract more users, and more users create more data, and the cycle goes on, right? So every API tool, app, workflow, and component in the infra generate data for every interaction. And the data is generated as per the telemetry specification. This is another specification which is followed across all the components in the Sunbird infrastructure, not just question bank. Okay. And this telemetry data is processed in a vastly scalable pipeline to generate insights for all the stakeholders involved in this. And here are some of the example sample events uh, generated by uh, question bank infrastructure. Yeah. So we have seen in the previous session, uh, uh, the question bank has uh, tools like editor and uh, player for the creation and consumption. Uh, it, some of the few key aspects of the question editor is that uh, 
all the editor forms are metadata driven unconfigurable via apis this is aligned with the configurable schema of the question and question set objects which we have seen earlier so when we add a new attribute to the schema uh, called max attempts i can come and configure the form to show that field to the creator to fill in that data similarly a lot of features are inbuilt into this core editor like the collaboration capability and also locking capability to avoid uh, any accidental overwrites review and curation workflows and so on and editor also implements a plugin framework which allows new plugins to develop independent of the editor and add it to the editor to extend its behavior for example um, the current editor has plugins for some types of interactions like multi choice text input and select a new plugin can be developed for supporting matching interaction and add it to the editor to enable creation of match the following type of questions so new capabilities can be added as extensions to the editor without the need of touching the editor core and the editor is a reusable tool that can be embedded in other tools apps and workflows same like the editor uh, uh, question bank also provides a player for consumption uh, the player is responsive to different resolutions and orientations it has the core has features like intelligent layouts uh what it means is the player can automatically adjust the layout of the question or the options based on the resolution example it can switch from a grid or a four column layout to a two column layout or a one column layout automatically based on the resolution of the device and similar to editor there also has a plugin framework for extensibility and is embeddable in other tools or apps so both the editor and player are integrated into collection editor and collection player respectively for the enabling of uh, enabling the creation and consumption of course assessments in the course workflow okay so let's put it all together and see how different aspects of the infrastructure are used to implement the course assessment solution the ontology graph is used so that questions and question sets can be created for the same existing course taxonomy the configurable schema is used to add a new attribute max attempts to the question set the generalization and externalization capability is used to configure the course assessment uh, category with the required behavior and these bunch of apis are used for across the course assessment solution and the question set editor and player tools are integrated into the course workflows so the different components of question bank and flow used to devise a complete solution for course assessment with actually very minimal coding effort okay so let's imagine let's all imagine the possibilities what we can do with this question bank and flow in your context okay so um yeah so yeah uh, thanks ralu uh what we have is uh we have opened up our question bank infra on github the specs are available there we also have github discussions where you can engage uh put forward your ideas uh, if you would like to contribute anywhere if you would like to leverage it in any way uh you're most welcome to come and engage uh, with us through the github i've also listed a few use cases uh well one of them came up in the questionnaire where we can make videos engaging by intermixing questions we can enable auto translation or or anything else uh, right so uh, there are many possibilities from here on uh, thank you for staying with us so far all of over to you is there any yeah questions? yeah thanks thanks suren railu so couple of questions we have 6 minutes so we'll i think take few questions so first question railu you talked about uh, you know telemetry you know how that has been enabled across all assets on the uh, sunbird infra uh if i am the adopter of uh, you know sunbird how can i leverage it how can i access that telemetry aggregate data if yes how will i be able to do that and what can i do with this are there any limitations what i can do with that yeah uh, as such there are no limitations so telemetry has different parts to it one is a specification some adopter can use the specification and use 
uh, it in his completely different product. Use only the specification. Then we have some telemetry SDKs to build that are built to generate the telemetry events. Uh, and we have some reusable data by data jobs that are used to consume the telemetry events and generate reports out of it. So many of these things are independently usable. So an adopter can use them one or take all of them together. And uh, as I said, the infrastructure also has the capability to exhaust the telemetry data out back so that I can take the data out and do an analysis outside completely also. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, you also talked about QML and the importance of QML. Um, can you elaborate on two points? Uh, what's the difference between QTI and QML? And is QML only relevant for Sunbird or it, is it something which you know can be adopted by even non-Sunbird systems? And what is the value? Yeah. So for the first question, QDI and QML have the same principles in it. The main difference is the technology or the standards which we follow. QDI is more XML based, but we wanted to use our web standards like HTML and JSON. That's the main difference between QDI and QML. And then we enhanced a few more attributes on top of it. Hmm. Yeah. And yes, Q QML is again a more generalized specification, not limited to Sunbird. Anybody can use to create questions using that spec, uh, spec and use it in their systems. Hmm. Hmm. So let's say if I create questions, right? Let's say I have installed Sunbird. Hmm. I'm you know using Sunbird infra to create questions in QML format. Can I, whatever questions now are sitting in my Sunbird instance, can I use them in other systems? Yes. If the other system has the understanding of QML and they uh, have tools to interpret QML, yes, they are open to be used. Okay. Okay. Uh, question for you, Surain. Uh, you know, uh, you talked about all the power of, of uh, you know, uh, of the question and question set. Can you help us understand in the context of young children right in the early early uh, years of uh, of the schooling can sunbird enable uh, you know capabilities using question question set you know where the power of this is actually also used to learn very effectively you know uh, keeping in mind the young age of, of a kid if you can explain that you know uh, how will that uh, be possible on sunbird infra um Right, I think there could be uh, a few possibilities. One, for example, a question a day can be posed to the to the guardian or to the parent, where based on that question, they can engage the, the child into a learning activity outside the system and maybe upload a picture or uh, a photo of what they have done. Uh, other possibilities are that uh, at young age, when uh, kids are trying to learn, uh, they need a bit of hand-holding, they need a bit of scaffolding. Uh, so, you know, we can uh, enable layered hints or sort of an adaptive questionnaire through which as the child responds, the, the system understands where they are, what are they missing on, what do they need to know, and hence give them the appropriate questions at their level mm. uh, so that they are challenged enough to keep engaging there, but at the same time, they are also motivated enough to keep answering. Uh, so uh, through such uh, sort of layering of hints, uh, building scaffolding and ad adaptive things, uh, kids can be engaged on devices or there are ways to engage them offline by posing, you know, curiosity questions uh, using which parents can engage with kids outside the system. Yeah, yeah. In a normal, you know, education environment, you know, I've seen especially young kids doing match the following, they're using flash, you know, uh, cards in a physical shape. Uh, are any of these possibilities uh, enabled on Sunbird Infra and uh, uh, how are they enabled through templates? How does it happen? So all of them actually, uh, you know, we said question has interactions and we have some fundamental interactions like choice, match the pairs, uh, input text, classify, order. And through these fundamental interactions, you can enable creative games like flip card, uh, where you have memory uh, games, right? Where you flip a card and remember the picture to word matching. Uh, you can enable creative language learning uh, activities where they can uh, make a word by dropping in certain letters, arranging letter, like jumbled letters to create a spelling. Uh, so all of this fundamentally is either a sequencing or ordering or matching, uh, right? Uh, 
but uh, on the on the face of it can be uh, something very fun and engaging uh, where you can enable jumble words uh, missing words in a number sequence uh, compare different two numbers and then put the comparison sign in between so yeah all such okay. fun foundational fundamental learning is possible okay okay great great thanks railu and surain uh, for your session